Hello, friends, and welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Voss, and we are joined by our good friend who was once arrested for looking at someone, just for looking at someone. No, that's not true, but he is our good friend, Noah Storzinger. How you doing, buddy? What do you want to talk about? Oh, the elephant in the room, I think. Uh, your yeah. background, right? Uh, our, our good old Minnesota Timberwolves. Isn't that a great? I, I love this background, man. And and uh, yeah, I I think that it's it's time to to, to uh, maybe toot our own horn a little bit and and to maybe uh, be able to brag because we never get to do that. But uh, first, before we do that, I want to touch upon because I'm I'm going to tell you, man. I I felt so bad because I think it was two podcasts ago. All I had was positive, pretty much positive things to say about the Vikings, the Timberwolves, the Twins, and I was like, "Is that too much? Did I? Would, I'm, I'm a way homer guy now." And then, and then what happened? I was like, "No, the Twins continue to win, the Wolves continue to win, and then the next day, bam, the Minnesota Twins are pulled, at least for my viewing pleasure." And I thought, well, this is why we can't have nice things in Minnesota. And am I at fault now because I was way too positive that now I can't even watch my fucking team play baseball? Is is that is that on me? No, no. I it it, it was a shock to everyone too. Like first, I, like it came out of absolutely nowhere. There was no yep. warning, and that's what frustrates me. So okay, so let me ask your take on this because, um, you know, I I'm fortunate enough to have very good friends who can talk me down sometimes um, because I didn't come up. I didn't state this publicly um, until last weekend. And I said, you know, and I, I, I referred to La, La Pola Nostra and I was like, no, they, they completely like they insult you by not spending money and laughing about it. Okay. But now this is, and, and I'm not a big conspiracy guy. All right. But, but I was like, no, they knew this and this is just one more is like a man with three hands and all doing this to you and 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 so i was like no they did this on purpose i was like it's all conspiracy the reason dick bremer never got a a send off was because they knew they were going to shove this right up okay and as i'm going through this with my friends and and I'm, i'm so certain of this because like you said it was without warning Nobody, I, I woke up with Fox 9 and there it was. Oh, you can't watch Twins baseball anymore. And I'm like, what? And so I, I'm just going nuts. And and my good friend, and God bless him, but he said, well, no, you can watch this up at my cabin right now. And I, that doesn't help me. Okay. And he's like, well, our friend in Waconia, he can watch it on Spectrum. That doesn't help me. Okay. And, and so I, I'm just thinking how you can, how you would not, if you decided to sign a one-year deal with a cable company that was bankrupt and you knew they were bankrupt, how how could you have made that deal and then without warning a month into the season, just pull it from on a 10-game fucking winning streak? It makes no sense. It was such a, a, a hit to fans too because, I, I mean, I, I haven't seen a game since – obviously since they, they, they made the move and there's options for, for people to do, um, but they all suck. I mean, there's a, a third what party website you can, do. Or you can go to FUBU or whatever Fubu it is. But, or but the, the thing is, is I looked and it's like a hundred bucks a month right. and I'm not paying that. Are you kidding me? Just yeah. to, just to watch whatever. Um, now my buddy just said he, he got that, but he dropped cable. I can't do that. Okay. Because I'm still watching the NBA fucking playoffs. All right. And I like watching the U.S. men's soccer team every once in a while. I can't get I'm not going to stream 75 Jamal Murray, 75 different streamers so that because I, I got to stick with cable. But I'm not happy with with Comcast. I already were the pirates of the cable system and I pay too much money to get what I want every every day. OK. But when they, when they did that and they blamed it all on Diamond Sports and said we gave them all these kind of – but my deal is the Twins are Pontius Pilate. They wash their hands and go, sorry, you suck. So I get to Sunday. They're on a 12-game winning streak, and now I, I take responsibility for the win streak going 
going kaput because I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go by myself because I, I just, I have to watch baseball. But then I was like, fuck La Pola Nostra. I'm not doing it. I'm not. So I chose not to go to the game because the Wolves were on later on and we end up losing and I'm still heartbroken. I think that it's, it's, it sucks in the sense that as the, the, the Polas knew this was coming, they absolutely knew this was coming and you had no backup plan. Comcast is one of the biggest cable companies in the world right now. Right. Right. And, how much, I mean, it's gotta be 50, 60% of your, of your viewers that are using this right now. I don't know if that's correct, but it's gotta be a good chunk. And for a team on a 12 game winning streak, and then all of a sudden you cut off half of your viewing audience to, to not be able to watch a team go through at a historic run at this point. Um, that's criminal. I, how do you, how do you get away with that? And just because you wanted to pocket this extra TV money, you knew this was coming, you cut off your viewers and you left a bad taste in the mouth of a lot of Twins fans that were watching really fun baseball. I, I agree. And, and, and one, you know, and like I say, my, my buddy, I thought did a good job of talking me down a little and, and trying to get to reality um, where, and he was like, you know, this has happened to, to eight other teams, you know, I think or seven or eight other teams. I, I know it was Detroit, maybe Atlanta. I don't know if it was Pittsburgh, but it, it happened in city too. Yeah. Okay. And, and so it happened. So he was like, no, it's not just a Minnesota conspiracy, but, but here's, here's my deal. I was like, if you knew that this was a bankrupt organization and somehow there was going to be negotiations going, the twins chose to go with them for one more year. And if they knew that there was even a chance that this would happen, then I would I, John Voss would would go streaming if that's the route that they were going to take because that's the in, inevitable future, okay? But they chose to do this in the midst of me being stubborn and being an angry old man, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it now. And and uh, you know, to my to my buddy's point, like I don't want to believe that this is a conspiracy, but basically the middle finger did go up to the Twins fans again, and and. I'm sorry, I, I can't go. I fine, I can go to as many home games as I want. I can't go to to games on the road, but it doesn't matter. The one pleasure I have in my in my life, except for my dog, is coming home every day and knowing there's gonna be a twins game on. And and it's gone. Well, and that's the thing for me. I I don't even live in the state anymore, so I can't go to many home games. I can go to a couple right. when I come back. But I have zero – yes, there are ways of watching this team, but you took away my easiest method and the method I've been using for a long time of watching – like I'm not switching cable providers. I'm not exactly. going through that whole process. I'm not right. – I don't want to spend 100 a month just – yes, I love Twins baseball, but $100 a month for one program yep. to watch Twins baseball. No, because yep. guess what? I can still watch – or I guess I can't watch the Timberwolves anymore either if they were – to go back, whatever. No, it's now it's no. Bad. And the link, link season's coming up. You can't watch them. And, and it's and a so good time mean, to watch them now too, with with how women's basketball is. So, it, so does that mean that every Minnesota affiliates uh, professional team is going to go to their own streamer? It's going to be like Canelo Al Alvarez, you know, the boxer. You go, well, oh, I just got my own. That, that's the only way you can watch me is if you get this. But to your point, like really, so every motherfucking Minnesota team that we want to watch, we have to stream. We have to get a, a different provider. If the money, is this not, why don't you just ask me to bend over? If, if the money's there, they're going to absolutely do it. But, and that's my, that was my other point to my buddy. Um, and you know, I, it wasn't a sell by any case, but I, I said, man, the twins could have had the food and beverage job. They didn't want to be on TV. Now that's a casino reference, the movie casino reference, but um, I, I'm telling you, it's just so disappointing that I cannot watch um, my team. And, you know, even after they lost, after 12 in a row, I, you were like, okay, well, now here, here it comes back to reality. And they win again. So, uh, you know, I, I wish we could continue to talk Twins baseball and, and how sucky the, the La Pola Nostra is. 
Uh, but we have bigger fish to fry. Uh, and, and so I think it, it's, it's time that we, we, we probably, what you call it the elephant in the room, but man, Minnesota Timberwolves. And where do you start? Where, where do you start talking about what we've seen in game one and game two um, of the series with Denver? Um, this is the best defense I've ever, 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 ever yeah. seen. Game two was, was, I was, I was hysterically laughing with like, first of all, how frustrated we were making. First of all, second, off, Jamal Murray needs to be suspended. He's a, he's a, Wait, we got it. We got it all again. I, I know. We can't, I know. We can't, we can't shoot, shoot, shoot. We can't it's shoot right all here. those. I know there's so can, much to cover here, but to see them frustrate the defending champions who are, you know, the, the two seed, really nice team to see them frustrate them like that was so fun. And to hear the fans get, I mean, you were just, you could hear them getting so frustrated and you've always heard at target center, the, the refs, you suck chant, uh, quite a bit from Timberwolves fans over the years when the teams weren't that good. Um, to hear it from the Nuggets, like within the first two minutes, was right. crazy. And and it, it truly was like you had seven guys, seven eight guys on that on the court because it was it was insane. Okay, the the, the very first thing that you you open with, and I I I agree, it was second on my list of what I wanted to bring up, just because we have the biggest stud. Uh, ever playing basketball for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, but you brought up defense and um, I wanted, I can't take credit for it. Cause I didn't find it first. It was my buddy uh, that, 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 that I guess gave caught attention for it and gave it to me. Did you see what KG said during the game? He said, this team right now is doing what the Golden State were, what Steph Curry and, and Golden State did offensively, what, five, six years ago, and the NBA wasn't ready for it. That's what the Wolves are doing defensively right now. And the NBA, not the Phoenix Suns, not the Denver Nuggets, the NBA is not ready for it. No, and 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 it, I think that's what was crazy to see was just all the comments of like, Hey, this ain't the Lakers. Hey, this ain't the Lakers because Denver was truthfully, I think, beside, you know, if you make it to the finals, you play, I'm going to assume the Celtics are going to make it. Um, Denver was the one team that I was a little nervous about coming in. I, th I thought we would play them better and we, right. <laughs> we have, but um, this defense has gotten better in the playoffs than it was in the regular season. I mean, to hold this team to 80 points, not even eight. This is 35 at the half. No, 35, 35 points at the half. It, 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 I go back to, I mean, it was like you had eight guys out there and, and to, to, I thought we had, we had texted before the game. You know, we were very confident. I think that you had Jokic on the ropes and that had, he wasn't going to be able to maneuver this. And then Gobert goes out and it gets a little like, okay, what are they going to throw at him? I think both of them, I mean, we weren't even the leading score. Aaron Gordon was the leading scorer of that game. If he's the leading scorer of a game, I mean, yeah. you, if, and you don't win that game, I, I mean, it. So I, it, it's. I, I really don't think they're ready because it is. It is so suffocating. But I, I, I have never seen a defensive performance like that in my my life, and I, I don't know if many people ever have. I mean, there, there's a point. There were times during the game that you had five guys just frantically running and fouling the ball. And there was never a chance for any Denver nugget to, to, to relax or to be able to do anything. They were so frustrated throughout the game and it, it was early on, you know, and, and I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. And I have to believe that it is going to continue throughout, throughout the playoffs. Well, Nas Reed at the end of the game had said that he thinks there's another level to the defense, wow. right? And I mean, I thought we we had hit that second level. You're without the defense player of the year. Look, he's going to be the defense player of the year. He just yeah. is. And I think he said there's another level. Well, and and what I was shocked about last, uh, I guess, in game two. So, hands down, the NBA defensive player of the year is Rudy Gobert. And I listen to 
Chuck and Shaq and Ernie talking, Kenny talking before the game. They said, you know, that Rudy was was witnessing the the birth of his first child in the Twin Cities, which I I, I didn't. That was the first I heard of it. And they're like, oh no, he'll make that flight for sure. And then I get the text, nope, he's out. And number one, I'm going to say, not I don't have a problem with Rudy Gobert at all. The birth of his first child, and he's there, and he missed the game. No problem, man. I, I have n- none. That That is fine with me, okay? Uh, however, I texted many people. I was like, nope, no problem with Rudy. But it gets in the way of what my impression of how this series was going to go. Because you figure it's just not – you think the, the Nuggets are going to win a game and it's going to be at home without the NBA Defensive Player of the Year. This is their shot, right? Nope. They took it up a notch. They look better, if I may say. But I think if Gobert was in in the in the lineup, it would have been the same thing. I think jugular, and that's what they went for. But I never seen anything like that in my life. Now I had to defend Rudy Gobert at work today of people saying, "Well, he's just overrated now." I mean, look, look what they did without him. I said, first of all, shut the fuck up. Like yeah, that right. is terrible. <laughs> Terrible take. Are you kidding me? Yes. I don't care. It's yes. one game. Yep. I was like, remember, imagine Kansas City doesn't have a pro team. I said, I said, imagine, imagine what they would do. Like they 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 just discovered what they could do. Imagine what they do with him on the floor. He's been yep. an incredible defender this year because he has other defenders that he can count and rely on. And it's just been insane. And and he hasn't been different. I mean, I thought he looked really good in game one. Um, and, and we had talked about things that don't show up in the box score and that's what Rudy Gobert has done. Uh, but okay. Um, let's go, let's go this route. Game one, I'm watching with, uh, with, with some good friends and I, I mean, I, I was, I acted like a damn fool, uh, because I was, I, I, I was just so into this bat into game one, like every single basket, offense or defense aside, you were on the edge of your seat and just like it was like the last shot of the game every time. And, I mean, I was doing stupid things like that one where Edwards missed the three and Nas dunked it back, you know, and I was like – and like I forgot where I was for him and I was going, ah! Like I was the guy that was, you know, and yeah, I made a fool out of myself, but that's why it was so cool to be around, you know what I mean? And, and witness something like that. Now, the point I made with my buddies was I was like, this is going to be a knockdown drag out haymaker after haymaker punch. Like it, it's going to be a brawl. Every game is going to be like game one. And in boxing, they always say, it's not if you get hit, it's if you get back up. And I will say right now, the Wolves through not one, not two, but three haymakers in a row, and game two was done. And so Denver, they're yeah, defending world champions. So they could get up off the mat. But to me, it seems like you probably aren't familiar with Rocky Four, but Rocky thrown in a towel for Apollo Creed. That's what Denver seems to me like that. Oh no, it's Jamal Murray who's throwing towels. Not the Denver Nuggets, but it appears they are going to do that. So I just got the notification. Uh, Rudy Gobert just officially won Defensive Player of the Year. Yes. 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 Excellent. Perfect. What a week for him. Right? Right? Game. God bless him. Good for you, man. Um, All right. I was was just going to say, I don't know how a team like that, you know, I get it. They're they're a really good team, but – Losing like that and then having to go to Minnesota, I, I just I, I don't I don't know how you come back from that. And I don't want to jinx anything. I don't want to say right. like I don't want right. to take it easy e- take them easy, but man, that's a tough one to come back from. But and 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 that's just it because and, and we're gonna get to this in a sec. And I mean it's down the road we're gonna get to this um about where Denver is mentally because maybe all season, most of the season. And what I was concerned going into Phoenix was our mental state going into these playoff games. But 
mentally, Denver, they they look beaten after they got the shit kicked out of them. You know what I mean? Like it, they just look yeah. they look beaten. So with that being said, like I, I mean, I've I've never seen a team look so dejected on the court and pull some of the shit that they pulled last night that, that showed you. And, you know, let, I want to get into this guy right now because he was the guy I was worried about. And what you are seeing with Anthony Edwards, you are seeing a story unfold, not only Anthony Edwards, but the Minnesota Timberwolves franchise as a whole before our eyes in the playoffs. You've always said, Oh, they're going to, they are going to take it up a notch in the playoffs. They always did. But I don't think you could ever have foreseen what what we are what what is going on right now. And one of the big reasons is Anthony Edwards, man. That guy is 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 becoming such a like we always see he's a stud, but he has really transferred. And I like what did Barkley say? He's not Ant anymore, or was it Shaq? Shaq said he's not Ant anymore. He's Rex, like T Rex. Yep. Because that's how good he is right now. And I'm sorry, man. He He's going to lead us far. He's got a different look in his eye right now. Like just a different – it's it's hard to explain. He just looks like he wants something, and you know what that is. He wants a championship, and he's ready to, to take it take it right now. Um, and they can't just, stop him. They haven't oh, – I mean – And, and I've, I've never – I'm so excited because – this is the most national media that that this guy is, is having right now. I know he was an all star. I know he's kind of been um, on the up and up re- recently, but this right now has solidified him as, you know, potentially top five in the NBA right yeah. now. And he and he's not down. And he and here's the point because I think it was Reggie Miller that brought it up in game one. And uh, I will say this, man. Maybe it was game two. Um, when I watched game one, there were so many pivotal plays where you were like, Denver going to make their run right now. They're going to make their run. And we would always answer. And to me, and it wasn't even close. I think it was the beginning of the third quarter, the block that he made. And then the outlet to towns when he, when he slammed and he got fouled. That was to me, that was like, I'm, that's the turning point right there. And I think it was Reggie Miller that brought it up. He said, we have never seen a 22 year old at this level on both sides of the ball. And, and there was a, a brief discussion with my boys. And, and I said, no, you, you go down and LeBron, Kobe, Michael Jordan was just fresh. out. He had a broken foot. I think at 22. Yes. You saw guys that were at that level, but not on both sides of the ball. There's no way at 22. No, and then, and they've said like he is he is probably one of the best two way players in the game right now, if not the best, um, with with how he has been playing, um, which is just so exciting because how many times have we have we played guys like this before, and now he's finally on our team? Like it's just right, it's right. it's just so exciting. I I know it, and I I was talking to a a parent at a school and a younger guy, young fellow like like yourself. Um, but he's from Chicago, but he always will tolerate me talking about the Timberwolves and he, he watches them as well. But um, I, I did, you know, and I forgot, oh, I'm supposed to be a teacher and, you know, and talk about education, whatnot. No, I go right to the Wolves. And, and I was, we were talking about Edwards. And I, and I said, as I'm getting all fired up, you know, and I sometimes I forget I'm not on a podcast. And I'm like, and the thing is, man, he's our guy. He's our guy. This is our guy. And, it, and he started laughing. He was, he was looking at me and he was like, man, and you believe this, you know, he was like, I, I'm watching you get excited right now. And I'm like, we've never had that. I go, you had Michael Jordan. Oh, but you were too young to know what that was like. And I'm like, we have that right now. That's why I'm so excited. And it's interesting. He hates the comparisons to Michael Jordan. Cause he's like, well, I'm my own guy. Like, I, 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 yeah. No, like, he, I'm not- he said, I'm going to be better than him. Yeah. I, I, but right. I am. Um, but but to to the point of the I think the broadcast was yesterday they had said that even a guy like a Kobe, MJ, they weren't they weren't this good at 22. That's what I'm they saying. Weren't. 
Yes. And, and it's just, it, it's, it's mind blowing to see like, he's not even close to his prime. He's going to kill it. Yep. I, I agree. Uh, now let's go to Carl uh, Anthony Towns. I don't think that you could have been, you know, and my, my buddy called me out on it and, and, and said, you know, you were, you were so upset when he got hurt and, and thought we're never going to see the full potential of what this team is. And I think he was trying to bury the hatchet a little bit and say, now I understand what you're saying. Carl, I, I could be more pleased with Carl Anthony Towns right now. Right. I, I told you yesterday, I said, this is going to be, a, I think a big game for cat. Yep. And what, I'm 27 yep. points set the tone in the first quarter. Um, no, with, with no go bear, but also defensively. And, and I mean, he's just been, been, been he's, great. Has he even yelled at an official this, this entire play? Like I I'm not seeing it. He is playing so smart. And what I was worried about last night in game two was I was like, he's going to get in foul trouble right away. And he's going to get those stupid ticky tack fouls where you're just, he's reaching in and, and he didn't, I mean, he maintained being able to stay in, in, in the ball game all night. And, and he, he had a couple, he had one dumb foul, but, it, but yeah, I mean, you're going to do that when you got Jokic on you. I mean, he, yep. Jokic flails and does his thing, but, um, but no, he's been, he's been absolutely fantastic. And I, I think it's just, it's so fun to see him go from the narrative of he doesn't show up in the playoffs. He's not a defender. I mean, complete 180, complete 180 of what the narrative has been around him. And he truly has been such a great, not complimentary piece, but 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 star of this team too. Yeah, I, I agree. And and what what I find interesting is you you watch the post game interviews, or you even watch like you know I I I think I saw it like hey Minneapolis we're coming back for game three get up we're we're right. He looks like he's having so much fun right now and. You work hard on the floor, but then you enjoy, you know, the benefits of what what that hard work is. And it looks like that's what's going on with the entire team. They love it. I mean, oh, go ahead. I was just say the whole the whole team is having fun. Cat had said that, you know, we don't have a big three, we have a big fifteen. I mean, this this whole team, one through fifteen, just wants to play and wants to have fun and wants to win. It's amazing. It's uh we're talking about Denver's mental capabilities and the thing that almost gave me just like I was just like man was Alexander Walker smiling as he's defending the player that he's guarding constantly smiling and and I was like man if I was watching this because my good friend Marty brought up he was like can you imagine if you were if you didn't have a horse in this race, uh, you, you weren't a Denver Nuggets fan, you weren't a Wolves fan, but you got to watch in New Haven, Connecticut, you know, and, and watch it. And you would kind of go, man, that Alexander Walker, he kind of a dick, man, except for the fact that I was like, they are so in their head that this guy is like, I don't care what you bring. He is laughing at you and he backed it up every single time, man. People were calling it psychopath energy or whatever, and it was so fun because he knew, like, I'm I'm a better defender. I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna lock you up right now. And I will say, and I've said it, I think every episode that we've talked to Wolves, Nikhil Alexander Walker is my favorite guy off the bench right now. I, I know we got Nas Reed, but Nikhil Alexander Walker is my favorite guy off the bench for the energy that he brings in the the, the defense of, and that point right there was him smiling and knowing, like. I, you're in my Love torture it. chamber right now. Like you are in my torture chamber. I'm gonna lock you up, and I'm I am pissing you off right now. And it fuels me. I love it. it he is he is my favorite. I know it. I, after watching that, I had to rewind it. You know, I wanted to just go throw rocks at brick wall. That's that's how much like like honestly. I okay. So here's one that I'm gonna give you. And you know, winning solves everything except for the fact that I'm not I'm not handing out these trophies. Um, you know, like a participation ribbon. All right. Uh, Jade McDaniel, I, I believe you sent me, was it you that sent me the text? What do you think? Five points, but he's a plus 50. I, I didn't, but I was, I think I was going to was that 
he he had well first of all the first game he didn't score at all but he was a plus no. 20 yep I, 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 like I, I, I believe sure. it what five points and a plus 50 on the floor okay and so mr mcdaniels you are officially off off of the list there is no minnesota timberwolf that is on the you gotta not like three guys. Okay, that rule's done right now. Winning uh helps everything. Let's go back to Nas. He outscored the entire Denver Nuggets bench in game one. And you know, when when that game started, it was okay, yeah, but then when the bench came in, Nas did not look good in the first half, and then suddenly, like, oh, okay, now I'm gonna play. And out Outscore the entire Denver bench. And did you did you see though the the mic'd up moments between him and and Nas Ant Reed? Edwards. Ant Ant was just a leader, a leader. And you guess what? Right after that, 22. he comes out and just. And at first, I was like, "Is he just looking off into the distance? He's not listening to anything he's saying." And nope. And and you have to appreciate what is going on with this team. Because they feel right now that they can that they can beat anybody, it that that's in in line, and, and they absolutely can. I I, I mean, we, we we talk about you know who might be who might come over on the Eastern Conference if we have the ability to make the finals. But look, I, I, if we can kick Denver's ass, I don't I I don't know what if any of the other two teams over there scare me. I, I right. truthfully don't. Right, and and uh, one of my buddies made the made the comment. Now, Oklahoma City is going to be a scary team for the next five years, but I do not believe this is the year for it. And so, you know, I, I get ahead of myself sometimes. How can you not after last night's game? And I was talking to a buddy and I was like, bring Luca's bitch ass, okay? I want to beat that, all right? Uh, and he was like, well, no, I, I think it's going to be – or." I, I, I'm scared of Oklahoma City. And I'm like, if it is OKC, I am not worried about that. I'll be worried about them down the road, okay? But not right now. And and I, I wouldn't mind beating Luka, but I, the whole OKC team in general, I think needs a good humbling. I understand you're a young team and you're playing well and whatnot, but – I, I just want someone to beat the rails off of them right now, just with how it, it's like a frat house up there. And I just, I, I, I need them to shut the fuck up. I don't know. Okay. I, All right. Uh, so I, I've never had this kind of confidence um, for game two, when we started out, or I'm sorry, I think it was game one. That was the one we started out like 18 to four right away. And I was like, they, they can't, they have no answer for us, like immediately. And that was, that was the game where like, Anthony Edwards is refusing to let this team lose. He's not going to, he's not accepting it. He's going to, you know, and they were just kind of rolling their eyes. Um, But I've never had this kind of confidence in a, in a Minnesota team ever, ever before. And, and I don't want to say that I'm a conspiracy theory guy. You know what I mean? Like I, no, I'm, I'm not into there was fraud election in 2020. Uh, I'm not into the Illuminati or whatever it is. However, well, I do want to know what happened in, in Dallas back in November of 63. However, okay. I got a text at the beginning of game two and I was like, and I can't take credit for it. It's my good friend again. He says, Oh well, this doesn't fit the NBA script. And and what I noticed in game one and two, Jokic continuing to give the shoulder offensively, no call whatsoever, right? Then Anthony Edwards gets teed up for looking at someone. Have you ever seen anything like that in your life? That have, have you ever seen anything like that no. in your life? No, and and it was the the stupidest tech I've ever seen, and they rescinded it the next day. It doesn't matter at that point, but because I I was I was at that point, I'm like if we lose by one point, it, it I mean it, it that would be that would be crazy. And guess I what? Understand the, the, he's the ref and he's 
He's flexing. He didn't. He looked at him. He looked at him. It's the playoffs. There's going to be energy, you know, and just let him, let him, let him do it. I mean, the, the ref that did that deserves to only coach G League games the rest of his life. He, but he didn't do anything. I didn't. Okay, so later in that game, Jamal Murray, right? Was it Jamal Murray, the king of class, hits a shot and he starts doing the six shooter. And what John ja, ja Morant didn't teach us anything? What the fuck was that? And was nothing. Good, no, nothing. Now, how is this different than that? I it, it, it's it's not. And sorry, my dog's going no. Okay. He doesn't like being leashed up. Um no, it, it's terrible. It, it was a terrible, terrible, terrible call. And I don't know if it was part of the script or not. Okay. But here's the other thing then. Game two. Have you ever seen a coach run out on the court and get this? You know, they're like major league umpires and coaching them and they're bopping them. He got this far away from the referee's face and there wasn't even a technical foul call. Well, what did I immediately text you? I, 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 what I'm saying, I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, for sure. Okay. Right after that. <laughs> Jamal Murray, you know, who to me looks more like Lamont Murray right now, but uh, Jamal Murray is so upset with the officiating because to me, I thought Malone was trying to get kicked out or at least get a technical, either spark his team or whatever. He doesn't know what to do anymore. So let's stir shit up, right? Then Jamal Murray throws a towel at the official, but he missed him just like every other shot he threw up that night. And he was so upset that he didn't get the official's attention. He throws a heat pad out onto the court. Nothing. They throw it back. Okay. You know, you got January 6th and people tracing people's phone records and whatnot. And nobody even bothers to say Jamal Murray threw something on the court during a game. Now imagine if Carl Anthony Towns would have hit that and he broke his ankle. Then, then now do you care? Now do you care? What the fuck is going on in the NBA? If he's not looking, people are saying he's not going to get suspended. If you're not suspended for that, I don't know what, what we're doing anymore. And also, didn't he do this? Rudy Gobert, yep. he was yep. paying homage to him having his first kid, I believe. I Okay, he better get the max fine. And they're going to say, well, Jamal Murray's not going to get suspended, and if he does, then, you know, Nuggets fans are going to go, well, you know, that you beat us without our full team. Fuck. I want Jamal Murray on that court. I need him on that court, okay? But double, double standard, and I guess my whole conspiracy theory deal is when you try to – make things up and, and make it so lopsided. And I'm not like referees don't win or lose games or anything, but this was so evident. Okay. But guess what? When you have a team like the Minnesota Timberwolves who are playing right now, it doesn't matter eight on five. It doesn't matter if you are cheating, we're still going to beat your ass. There it is. It's the best. It It, it is. It, it's, it was terrible. I, I don't know how that, that even happened, but um, what are your predictions for the rest of the series? What you got? 4-0. Uh, not, not, even, not even close, okay? And I'll tell you what, uh, you got folks, you know, I, I woke up this morning and I saw, I think, uh, was it Senator Bachman? No, no, it was Klobuchar. Uh, Amy Klobuchar, well, I can't. You know, it's great to be up by that much, but when you have to get up in the morning, um, you want to go to bed, and yet, because you're a Minnesota fan, you think they might lose this yet. Basically, was her words. I'm paraphrasing. And I'm like, you know what, Miss Klobuchar? Here's the deal. A, you don't turn the game off because this is a different, any kind of Minnesota team that you've ever seen. Second... You don't turn the game off because if they're up by 30, you beat them by 40, okay? You don't turn it off. So there you go. And 
This is how you asked me about how I feel. I think 4-0 for sure for the Minnesota Timberwolves against the Nuggets. They got me yelling at strangers. As I'm driving for game one over to my buddy's house, I'm at a stoplight, and a couple is walking their dog, probably 10 years younger than me. He's wearing a wolf shirt. I'm wearing my KG jersey, and, of course, I start doing this. And he's like, we're going to sweep the Nuggets. And I'm like, we're going to the finals. And his wife immediately, you know what? I don't think you should jinx it right now. And I forgot I was on a podcast. And I'm like, I'm a Minnesota fan, and I've never seen fucking anything like this in my motherfucking life. Honk, honk. And I start honk. The guy in front of me is like, what are you doing? You're honking your horn at me. And I'm like, no. And this woman like got all intimidated by me. And I'm like, you're right. I can't just start cussing at people from my car. I think a husband was okay with it. But this is what I, I, I've always said. Maybe, oh, in a few years. No, our time is now. Right now, Noah. I love it. It, it, it is. It is. I'm going to go same thing. 4-0. Um, I... Beginning of the series, I had Wolves in seven. I thought this was a seven-game series. Yeah, because it was um, going to be a – But as Barkley said – Mike Tyson, round I, one. I, I normally don't don't go much with what Charles Barkley ever says, but he said, this series is done. It's a 4-0 sweep. Yeah. It's done. It is done. They have no answer, and um, I'm, I'm ready to see it, so I'm really excited. Okay. Um, finally, um, yeah, I got – Yelling at, at strangers um, off the deal. Okay, so to me, right now, um, the Wolves are maybe only going to get better as as the, the series goes on for sure, but as the playoffs go on. And I ain't worried about Boston, but yet I relish a Boston NBA Finals. After I think it was we played him really early in the season. It was a really good game, and I had texted my uh, my my coworker who's a Celtics fan. I said, "Man, give me seven games of this in the finals. That would be insane." And and when I said it, I was like, "Yeah, you know." No, you it, said it, it, it on this podcast. You said I, that same thing on this podcast. For yes, sure. but I, I I said it. and I was like, I, you know, you truthfully aren't every year. You're like, oh, we're going to the finals, and I didn't know what we were going to be. This team was going to be, but. I think it has a legit shot of happening. I I agree. I agree. And here's the thing. Me growing up watching the Wolves when they did make the playoffs every year, chances of you, and they did, they usually split game one and two on the road. But in deciding games on the road, it was a done deal. You you were going to lose the game. We're four and all on the road in the playoffs. We haven't lost. Motherfuckers, we have not lost a playoff game in six tries so far. We are. I, I'm used to. I mean, I've seen a couple Wolf playoff series, and you know, you lose a lot. And and I was just going to mention, we have not lost in the. I mean, we were one of two teams, the other being OKC, but we have not lost again. We played six playoff games, and on an average, even a really good team is going to lose one or two of those, truthfully. Right. And and and. Wow, I it's I speechless. And, You're always speechless. And and here's the final point that I want to make um with oh sorry with my beloved Timberwolves. Uh I would so I didn't have to have K fan on in the background on my way back from school today. Um because I have my own car, which I have serious, you know, and they're I like to sing along with you know with, with the radio. But I turn it on a K fan and by chance, Dan Barrero's guest today was Jimmy Jam Harris, a guy that I would consider, like, we have the footage, folks, not lying. He knows what kind of fan I am, and I know what kind of fan he is. And the one thing I want to touch upon that he and Barrero talked about, which makes so much sense, is, you know, when in 2004, they brought Sam Cassell and Latrell Sprewell in to give KG one one shot at a finals, and they didn't make it. And you knew that that was their one opportunity because they never put, and at that time it was because of his contract, they couldn't put guys around KG. So you knew it was done after this, right? 
The point that Jimmy Jam made, which I love, is that this is a young team. So the reason why we as Timberwolves fans should, should be so happy is that, okay, we don't make the finals this year, but I don't think that's going to happen. We have years and years of this kind of brand of basketball, honestly. And, and if, if you can implement this kind of defense with these kind of players who are relatively young, except for a, a Frenchman who still keeps up, you're going to be able to pick and choose. People are going to go, yeah, I want to come to Minnesota. And you're going to be able to go, I can choose now which guy is best for the system that I have I, I've implemented. Right. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of, a lot of changing in the narrative of Minnesota here. I think in the, in the coming years with, with what this team is, because yeah, we never were able to attract free agents. Um, but you've built this team, not just around Anthony Edwards, which I think is my favorite piece is you've got, and is your yeah. scoring punch cats complimentary. Um, and Rudy's there to anchor your de- anchor your defense. It's not, Hey, we're going to build around just Luca. So we got no defense, but we're just going to score the ball. Yep. But this whole team has so many complementary pieces and stars that they're going to be able to do so much and mix and match and, and do what they want to do. And it's it's exciting to see. And, and you're going to see, I think, this team um, be on that Denver echelon right now it, coming up here, um, it, really being a new force in the Western Conference. It's exciting. I, I agree. And and. How weird is this? Because I we, we talked about things that didn't happen before, but Tim Conway, man. Now, how how is this even possible? So if you know if you're familiar with Star Wars, you think about Tim Conley's Minnesota Timberwolves going against the defending champions, and obviously the defending champions are Darth Vader, right? And them saying, you know, uh, we meet again. The the you know, and Tim Conley now saying, actually, when we met the first time, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Except he's going against himself. This has got to be the weirdest deal because he constructed the Denver world champion, Denver Nuggets. And now he's got a potential world champion beating a defending world champion. And they're his own team. It's like, Conan the Barbarian, the snake with two heads, but it's the same snake facing off against each other. It's amazing. I know. I saw this the other day. Um, how how did he trade D'Angelo Russell for Mike Conley, Nikhil Alexander Walker, and two second round picks? How how did you do that? Apparently, smart. are you kidding me? And the I- Gobert one is the one that takes the cake because. When Tim Conley made that trade, now now follow me on this. Had he had any idea what Finch could accomplish defensively, but by just adding Rudy Gobert, that's going to change everything. I mean, is he way above? Are we like ropes on the Goodyear blimp when it comes to Tim Conley uh, because he knows so much more about it, or was it just? Hey, you know what? I get, and I'm going to shoot, and it's bullseye. I I think he had. You mean you 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 talked to 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 Finch on on strategies because it wasn't just hey Finch, I got you Rudy Gobert. And it's like figure it out. It's like oh oh my gosh, okay. Um, I I think Finch was always a big, two big, three big kind of guy. Um, coming, I don't think he ever embraced the small ball aspect. Yeah, when everyone the- said this was going to fail, everyone know, said this I experiment know. was going to fail. And you know what? It, it's those that perfect, um, like that, like that cat poster. Like you never know until you try, or, or you know, like the, those infra, those inspirational posters of like it took one guy to just take the risk. He could have been, oh, you know, everyone says it's not going to work. I'm not going to. He knew it was going to work, and he he shot his shot. The first year was tough, but I guarantee you, I'm, I guarantee you, there were thoughts of man, do I, do I abandon it? But I give him a lot of credit for sticking with it and sticking with majority of the same team and, and the fruits of his labor are, are on display right now. And it is, yep. it is here for everyone to see. Oh, and, and by the way, Marty, uh, your guy, Glenn Taylor didn't want Tim Conley and did not want to give him money 
to do. Now, my question is, is that true? Conley can opt out of his, his last year? Is his last year next year? Uh, I don't know if it's – I think he's got two more years after this year, but I believe he has an opt-out, and no one has been talking about it, which scares me a little bit. Well, okay, so that's my question. Now, Tim Conley doesn't get a ring – from last year, right? With the Denver Nuggets. Even yeah. though he constructed that team, he's with a different or okay. So that's my question is obviously this guy knows what the fuck he's doing. Right? I mean, you, you can't say the opposite of that. Okay. Um, but would he want to build a dynasty here? Or is he now ready to go? Look, I've done it in two different places. Look, look at me already talking like we won some shit. But would he go, all right, now I'm going to rebuild the Washington Wizards. What is that all about? I don't know. He's making a lot of money, and he's got ownership in this team right now. So I don't know step if stepping away is, is the move. And Plus, if we don't take it all the way, I, I don't see a scenario where he opts out in, in, in the sense of this is what he's built and he wants to see it all the way through. Even if we were to win a championship this year, I, I think he would still stick around and, and build that. It took a lot to get him here and a lot. Right. I understand the ownership. Taylor didn't want. I'm sorry. the ownership is different. So I, I truthfully, I'm wondering, you know, if, if A-Rod and, and Lori don't become the majority owners, I could see him out because Taylor didn't want him. So why would he want to be here? You know what I mean? So that that's where I get a little scared. Okay. Uh, don't say that. I, it just, sorry to end on a, a, a negative note, but no, I mean, no, 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 because we're not, we, we definitely will not end on, on a net. You, there's no way you can end on a, a negative note on, on this, um, that I, I just, I, I find it interesting because, um, like I say, I, I think that there is, room even for improvement to, in years to come with this team. And maybe we could see a Chicago Bulls type dynasty. That's how I, that that's how excited I am about this team right now. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's got the pieces. It, it, it has the pieces, it has the coaches, it has everything you would need um, to, to, to do that. I think it's just new for Minnesota fans. I mean, I, I was getting so hyped up at, at, at lunch today, just after this game. And, and especially after those Rudy Gobert comments that some of my coworkers had, but um, I was like, Hey man, we're not used to this. Let me like, I've never felt yeah. this way in my life. Right. Like this is, this is amazing. So, and, yeah. and so is NBA big in Kansas city without, without a, a, a team or, you know, no, you, you got people that just are, you know, you got a lot of Laker Lakers fans, yeah, right, right. Um, but you know, you got, I've been turning some people onto the wolves. I get a lot of, a lot of comments now or a lot of texts. Like, this Anthony Edwards kid is a uh, pretty, pretty good. I was like, yeah, you should, you should watch him a little more. Cause he's going to be, he, he's going to be on your TV a lot. I'll tell you that. Right. So. And, and, you know, it, it was funny because I think it was like six minutes left in the game. All of a sudden you heard wolves in four wolves in four. And you heard MVP chance for Edwards. Now, that's because every every Nuggets fan left, I believe, and we all know, listen to a big woo fucking song. There are a lot of transplants in Colorado, okay? There's a lot, a lot of Minnesota folk in Colorado. Jimmy Jam was at the game last night, but I'm saying there were no Nuggets fans left because the wind had, was completely out of their sails, and there were un, nothing but Wolves fans left at that point. I'll tell you this though. I've never been a guy to, I've never left a sporting game early. Never, right, yeah. never in my life. Yep. Um, yeah, well, grab I've, a I, I've seen ticket prices for Wolves game. And I can't imagine spending those prices and leaving early. I don't care if you're down by 30. First of all, you never know. You never know yep. what's going to happen. That's the best part about sports. You never know. Um, but I don't know, get another beer, like, like just relax. I just watch some basketball. I don't know. I get, I get your favorite teams getting destroyed, but like it, it's a two hour game and you spent maybe anywhere up to $3,000 for these tickets. Like yeah, watch, right. the full, watch the full game, support your team. I don't know. Well, like I say, mentally, I, I, I think that Denver has maybe cashed in their chips and shame on you, NBA how they handled this Nuggets series in, in all of just the, the unfairness and, and all the, the weird kind of deals where you're just like, well, wait a minute, the rule, 
strictly states you can't do that, Mr. Malone, or you can't do that. But here's the thing. No, you know what? You can't keep the Democrats in office forever. Okay. And so these, these rules will finally get enforced once again. And that's good. That's right. Because here's the deal. You think I like looking like this, like this is always going to be here. But when you texted me like the twins and the wolves haven't lost in two weeks, I, you know, I usually shave this about once a week in here. Here, I got a little, some seedlings. I'm growing my bangs out for my girlfriend. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to shave until the wolves lose. And, you know, I got my students are calling me Santa Claus right now. I have been eating more. Uh, but that is how crazy I am about this team right now. Period. Like I said, it's a feeling that I don't think any Minnesota fan has felt in decades or at all. Um, and it's no one, just like we had talked about when this team was in first place for forever, no one really knew how to process it. This is at a whole nother level because being first in the Western Conference was was great, but you always, you never, the, the playoffs were so uncertain because you knew, man, what's going to happen, Minnesota sports team, whatever. This is just cloud nine for, for a lot of, a yeah. lot of fans and they have no idea including myself i don't sometimes i don't know what to say i'm like man i don't know this is fucking great I, my, my, I, my friends all supposedly like the the positive johnny because there were there were not points in any of the six games that i watched this year where i where you just had that sneaking suspicion that that they were just gonna fuck it up they were gonna fuck it up well and that was uh, there was so many tweets of every fan last night had had PTSD from the Grizzlies series that we we weren't able to relax and we were biting our nails, including me, um, because of what we did during that Grizzlies series two years ago, giving up yep. twenty point leads in the playoffs. Um, but but this team just kept the pedal to the metal, and kept, I think it got down to like eighteen or seventeen. One point. I think it was, <laughs> and and remember they they hit a couple threes or whatever, and you were like. But I never felt like it was coming. I, I didn't. There, there was no way it was. And you talk about adjustments, but the Wolves haven't had to really adjust. They did in game one a little bit at halftime. But they just play their game. And their game is the most incredible defense. It's like the 85 Bears, right? the 86 Giants. That's the kind of defense you're seeing in the NBA. And you held a defending champion to 80 points in game two. It ain't going back to Denver, baby. You heard it here first. I love, no, absolutely. I, I have the opportunity to go to game five. I, I hope it doesn't. Um, well, no, I hope it doesn't because I, I no. really want to watch a Wolves game. I really want to get back and watch a Wolves game. But no, let's let us let's, uh, let's go to the Western Conference Finals. I'll watch yeah, the game. My, well, my league – in lawn bowling league starts at Brits pub on Tuesday night. That's the night of game five. Fuck that. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to do that at all. So, um, yeah, I bring out Lucas bitch ass. All right. And if it, if it has to, I don't care if Chet's from Minnesota, you, you beat his ass too. Right. All right. No, you got anything else because I know we didn't get to the twins, but that might have to be a conversation later. Um, because, Noah's got a new, brand new puppy, and he's been chomping at the bit. Yeah, I apologize if there's been any whining in the in my audio here, um, but uh, we had to get this podcast done. We absolutely did, but he's uh, he's not used to being cooped up like this. So, all right, buddy. Uh, well, for Noah Storzinger and Windsor, I'm Johnny Voss. My dog Nico Salvatore. Been watching the podcast. The show to be named later. We will see you next time, probably when the Wolves are in the next round. See you next time.